Welcome to Project Ascension's Guide to Prestiging. Once you've hit max level, you might not be satisfied with your build. One of the best options is to prestige and attempt again at getting a better build. But what are the best ways to prestige, you might ask? Well, in this guide, we'll go over many of the important things to consider and look into when you're looking to optimize your prestiges. First, let's talk about dailies. At 60, one of the first things you're going to want to do is obtain gold, honor, and marks of ascension. One of the best ways to do this as a new player is to do dailies. Some of the best dailies to consider will be keeping evil at bay, adventurer's contract, a lesser known issue, dungeons, and proving grounds. These are quick and can be done as soon as you hit level 60. They tend to reward gold, marks of ascension, mythic orbs, mythic runes, and spoils of war. World bosses are another great daily to take a look at. It's important to check global and see if any groups are forming to do world bosses. This is an easy way to get these quests done. Last thing to keep in mind is you can speak to Chromie in any major city and purchase temporal contracts and instantly complete any daily quest. This is something to consider when you have extra gold and know it is worth the reward that you will get from the quest. So you're ready to prepare yourself to prestige. When it comes to preparing for prestiging, it is very important that you invest gold onto the following things. This will help improve your prestiging experience, making it more efficient so that you can make better builds. First, let's go over Twink Gear. The most important thing is Twink Gear, and the best way to get it is PvP items. You can get Insignia Trinket, Rings, Back, Neck, Weapons, all from the vendor. You can purchase these with Honor Points, or buying them from the Auction House for Gold. You can invest in getting the upgraded versions every 10 levels, but this is mostly important for weapons, especially when you're DPSing. Some other things to keep in mind is when you're leveling, Satchel of Helpful Goods are very important. These contain good blues that you can use in future prestige runs, such as neck, shoulder, legs. The remaining pieces you might have to find while leveling or pick up from the auction house, which would be your head, chest, bracers, gloves, and waist. Next is going to be Aura and Potions of EXP. These are strongly advised when prestiging, especially since they stack, giving you an increase of 250% bonus EXP. You'll want to buy a potion of EXP on the auction house. Most people that do 15 to 60 groups will split aura costs between members of the party. One of your first investments should be a dealer's draft deck. This will allow you to pick up your first four abilities when prestiging, which will greatly increase your chances at getting a desired build you want. Another great quality of life item is the ability book. It will allow you to learn your abilities while leveling. This is mostly important for healers and tanks. When doing 15 to 60 groups, the most efficient route will require at least one person in your party to have the quest head. Since some dungeons will have quests that will help speed up the process, Horn is solely a quality of life item. Pick this up if you want to pull bigger while leveling. Lastly, what you want to invest into is golden cards. Golden skill cards are going to allow you to card two more abilities, allowing you to have up to four abilities carded at the start. Another thing that we'll need to cover here is REs. REs are very important to obtain when making leveling builds, for it's going to allow a faster and smoother prestiging experience. We're going to go over key REs to pick up in the three most common builds used in prestige runs. Next, we're going to go over builds. When it comes to builds, there are three main ones that we're going to cover. The first is going to be Fan of Knives. This is a DPS spec. It is also the general spec that you're going to want to use when prestiging. So looking at the talents, we have five points into dual wield specialization, five points into cruelty under two points into vigor, three points into omen, five points into close quarter combat, five points into dual wield specialization, three points into deadliness, three points into flurry, three points into vitality, three points into combat potency, three points into focus attack, three points into fine weakness, and two points into weapon expertise. When it comes to REs, the most important one, of course, is your fan of knives, which is soul of the warden. We're going to go three points into focused attacks, three points into vitality, one point into vigor, and three points into close quarter combat. The next spec we're going to go over is overflow. This build just needs healing touch at level one. So if you grab healing touch, you can do this build. First, well, let's look at talent. So you're going to go two out of three in nature's focus, three out of three in naturalist, three out of three on moon glow. 2 out of 2 on Nature's Majesty, 3 out of 3 on Nature's Grace, 5 out of 5 on Gift of Nature, 2 out of 2 on Empowered Touch, 2 out of 3 on Alacrity, 3 out of 3 on Meditation, 3 out of 3 on Living Seed, 5 out of 5 on Improved Life Tap, and 3 out of 3 on Revitalize. When it comes to REs, your primary one is going to be Overflow. Then you're going to use 3 out of 3 at Urgent Touch, 3 out of 3 on Nature Majesty, 
one on Pendulum and one on Celestial Focus. Build that we'll look into is Bulwark. Now, when it comes to Bulwark, you do require to have Shield Block, Defensive Stance, and a Thunderclap for this to work. If you have these abilities while you're leveling, this does work as the best tank to hold the most threat and damage while leveling. When it comes to Bulwark's talents, we have 3 out of 3 for Shield Specialization, 3 out of 3 Divine Strength, 5 out of 5 Adaptation, 2 out of 2 Vigor, 2 out of 2 Shield Master, 3 out of 3 Firm Grip, 3 out of 3 Improved Thunderclap, 5 out of 5 One-Handed Weapon Specialization, 3 out of 3 Vitality, 3 out of 3 Redoubt, 2 out of 2 Improved Defensive Stance, 3 out of 3 Critical Block, and 2 out of 2 Weapon Expertise. The Ares Prior List is Bulwark as your Legendary RE. 1 out of 1 for Crackling Thunder, 1 out of 1 for Vigor, 3 out of 3 for Vitality, and 3 out of 3 for Shield Mastery. Now you are prepared to prestige and know what build you're going to go from level 1 to 60, let's talk about leveling routes. So once you've hit level 15, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to form a party and do a 15 to 60 dungeon run. This is the most optimal way to level. This leveling route does require book, Potion of EXP and Ore of EXP, and works with both Horde and Alliance in your party. First, we'll start with Ragefire Chasm. You can do Stockade and then into Scarlet Library. When you get to Scarlet Library, you are going to want to take the quest for Alliance, Mythology of the Titans, and for Horde, Compendium of the Fallen. You don't want to pass in the quest until you're at the boss room. Next is Scarlet Cathedral, Muradon Purple Crystals. You want the quest Twisted Evils and pass it in before doing the boss. And then Prison. Once you're in Prison, you want to go until you hit level 55. Once they are level 55, you can go into Lower Black Rock Spire. You will be completing two quests here. The first is Operative Biju and then Biju's Belongings. Once these are done, you'll be officially level 60. When you unlock a new specialization at level 60, you're able to roll all of your abilities from level 1 to 60. The first four abilities, you are able to use your dealer's draft deck to determine what four abilities you want to start with. After that, the game will use your carded abilities for your leveling process. It is important that when you're considering making a new specialization that you have your desired cards already in place. You can see what cards are carded and prestige by talking to Chromie in any major city. Normally when you're prestiging, you're trying to make that perfect build. You're trying to get the best build that you possibly can. So one of the things you're going to be looking at is Hands of Fate. When you are leveling, Silas will reward you Hands of Fate at level 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60. You gain Hands of Fate according to your level. So example, level 10, you're going to gain one Hand of Fate, two for level 20, three for level 30, and so forth, up until 60 where you get six Hands of Fate. At 60, you'll have a total of 21 Hands of Fate. It is wise to consider what level you can obtain certain spells for your build and use your available Hands of Fate at that level to have the highest chance of getting the spell you desire. Lastly, let's talk about daily prestige quests. So once you prestige, you have a daily quest that you can complete that will require you to either complete a set amount of dungeons, a set amount of battlegrounds, or world quests. Now. As I mentioned before, you always want to do the 15 to 60 dungeon routes if you can. When you hit level 60, you are able to do the battleground quest by queuing up for 1v1s or 2v2 arenas. If you're trying to do the world quest, you mostly obtain most of this by just doing your starting from 1 to 15. If by any chance you did not complete it by that time, you can also do it by passing in hand of fate quests. Those do count towards your reward. As for the dungeons, just by doing the 15 to 60 group dungeoning, it'll automatically give you that reward. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and have a fantastic day. And don't forget to subscribe.